Hello, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. I am recording here Thursday morning. Markets have just opened. They're down 260 points. And it's been kind of that kind of week. Um, interesting way that it appears we may end the first quarter. We still have, obviously, all of next week to go as well. But you, you really um, see in this quarter this tremendous, I mean, gigantic move higher, a melt up, so to speak, as we kind of forecasted and talked about in January. And then that volatility came back in spades in February, but really we had this big panic attack at the beginning of the month in the market, and then a pretty significant rally. Didn't recover all of that February drop, but um, recovered well over half of it. And then at the end of February, you saw markets sell off quite a bit as uh, the president announced the initial announcement around his intention for sweeping tariffs in the steel and aluminum industry. Then um, the actual announcement came, and they kind of backtracked about 90% of what they had threatened to do. Markets recovered quite a bit. You had a, a really decent sort of first half of March. There were some bumps and things along the way. But then now, as we get into the end of the month, there's a few things that I think are weighing on market stability, creating a little enhanced volatility. Um, that would include uncertainty around what exactly the protectionist intentions are. They're announcing further tariffs here for China today. Um, they're actually not nearly as severe as I feared they could be. Um, but I think markets still, what they know is the president is using a lot of this as posturing and negotiating. They know um, that the president appointed free trader Larry Kudlow to his National Economic Council, not another Pete Navarro, Wilbur Ross type that in fact perhaps would have represented yet another anti-trade, anti-global economic activity voice in his economic ear. Um, and yet on the other hand, it's very difficult to discern how our um, trading partners may respond to different things and what uh, the president's serious about versus not serious about. So that creates an enhanced level of volatility, but certainly there's very little to pin the last 24 hours of market activity. We were up most of yesterday, sold off near the end of the day. Um, but I do think it's important, as opposed to just focusing singularly on this policy issue, that there is an overall backdrop that, that really enhances uh, and supports the higher volatility thesis. Um, I don't believe it's anywhere near the top of the list, but there's certainly ongoing kind of question about the Mueller investigation, excuse me, the Mueller investigation, uh, Russia and, and, and those things are out there where it could go, where it could not go. So that, that creates at least some degree of uh, uncertainty. Markets have mostly shrugged it off, um, but it doesn't help in terms of creating an environment of stability. And then I believe that even more so perhaps in the short term than this uh, sort of protectionist trade issue, you kind of have to interpret that in light of the fact that the very undergirding of market stability around monetary policy is in, in a slow transformation from heavy accommodation to a uh, path towards normalization. They raised interest rates again a quarter of a point um, this week, which was very expected. It was almost priced in 100%. And, and so we hear the Fed talking, and we know that they're a little bit more hawkish, but they're very slow about getting there, and I think that they're very susceptible to being spooked by markets. But my point is that there is a, a trend that then kind of takes away a little bit of the put and the backstop that's been in, in, in capital markets, particularly for risk assets. So our thesis would be that this volatility will continue for the foreseeable future, and yet offsetting some of the fear about volatility is in fact the very strong economic fundamentals. Um, we're going to go into next earnings season. We'll see what that does. I suspect it does not move the entire market higher, but that it creates tremendous uh, uh, opportunity for certain individual stocks. There, there is a big section in DividendCafe.com this week. I really hope you all read it. But I'm going to highlight a little bit of it here in the time we have left on the video. There is this no notion of surprises, that we've had these significant surprises in, in the market in 2018, and I don't agree with that. First of all, I don't believe in such thing as surprises. Um, the only surprise in, in, in my experience, uh, 20 years professionally investing capital, is that there isn't a surprise. 
Okay, we, we routinely are, are, expect there to be surprises in markets, surprise in catalytic events, and surprises in the way markets respond to certain events. Uh, surprises in relationship between assets, surprises in performance and behaviors, things of that nature. Look, you have a weak dollar this year, you have interest rates going higher, you have enhanced market volatility, and yet growth is still outperforming value. That, that doesn't make any sense. Um, you have oil prices, as we talk right now, sitting around $65 a barrel, uh, up on the year uh, 7%, um, up 35% for the last 12 months, yet you have the energy sector as the least performer, worst performer. And doing so, by the way, in an environment where the uh, Trump administration is highly supportive on a regulatory basis of the sector. So you have to ask yourself, is there something that we don't understand? Uh, or uh, are the markets permanently now going to price growth better than value forever and ever? Or in fact, is there a, vol a value that is building up that becomes very viable? Um, most certainly, we would lean towards that direction. Uh, so there are opportunities. There are mispricings. There are inefficiencies. And yet, we think that that will all exist within a backdrop of volatility for some time around the um, paradigm shift taking place in monetary policy, a paradigm shift that could have been a lot simpler and a lot smoother years ago, but I digress. Policy, uh, uh, excuse me, market volatility in a paradigm of some political uncertainty, and, and then uh, particularly when you drill down to the policy front of trade and, and global relationships with economic partners. So that's our scoop right now. Um, there are a couple charts at DividendCafe.com I'd like you to check out. The major theme I wanted to give you to watch the video centers around the surprises in the markets, what the response ought to be to it, and what the environment is that's creating the enhanced volatility. It's not really been a bad market as we sit here. The s and is up a tiny bit on the year. The Dow's down a tiny bit on the year. So you basically kind of a flattish market. Um, but some of the leadership names in the market have all of a sudden gotten tarred and feathered. And and you have this tremendous scrutiny around some of the FANG stocks and that socio-political controversy around some of the big tech names. Um, it was a real big theme of ours coming into the year. I began writing about it last summer. And, and th there is no way I could have forecasted how right we would be. This theme is taking over. And... So that adds another strain to where a lot of the uh, market has been. However, there hasn't been a big rotation yet. I would have thought people would leave a lot of the big neck, new tech, cool tech names flow more into value. We haven't seen those flows yet. Maybe we will. Um, so that's the scoop. I'm sitting here looking at my screen. I, I normally record this before the market opens. But uh, anyways, can't help myself. Reach out with questions. Um, reach out with, uh, with comments. We love your feedback. Thank you for listening to Dividend Cafe. We look forward to the first quarter ending and going on to the next. Markets never sleep. Neither do I.